Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of North Lake Images, and this is the second of two videos I've made about looking at black and white printing on this, the Epson ET 8550. Can't say the 8500, is, that's just a smaller version of this. Now, I did a video all about making profiles for matte photo papers and a whole collection of profiles with different media settings, explaining what the media settings were, why they made a difference, and they were ICC profiles which you'd normally use for printing colour. And I used the Velvet Fine Art or VFA media setting and the Epson Matte media setting and showed they were quite different. Now, the previous video to this I made about black and white printing looked at using some rather fancy expensive kit for measuring targets uh, on test images and producing sort of data from it, curves and information and data. And here's one of the curves, one of the text files uh, that I created from that, that showed in it, the essence of that was that, yes, Velvet Fine Art VFA on this particular paper. This is only one of all the papers I tested. This is the Olmec um, Photo Matte Archival 230 gram paper. And it showed that for that, that the black and white mode for the printer drivers is using Epson Print Layout. If you used that, you crunched up the shadows. Now, somebody asked me, could I do a simpler version of all that fancy kit? We're talking at least 5,000 quid's worth of kit and software that I was using for making these profiles. That's why they're such high-end profiles. That That's the color ones. You can use them, by the way, for black and white. Uh, just needs testing. They may work, they may work not so well as the ABW mode. Now, I've got an alternative version of my test image, and that's one here, and that has just 21 step patches on it. They go in 5% increments from paper white to black. Now that's as black as the printer can manage on that particular paper. And this particular one here, this is the Epson matte version of it. Now the Epson matte version on this paper, the linearity, now that's the evenness of the scale from white to black here, was pretty good. So much in fact that in general I'd be happy printing on this paper using the Epson matte setting and the um, ABW print mode in Epson Print Layout, or the driver works, you can call it from there as well. So this doesn't really need any adjustment. It does perhaps need a bit of tint adjustment because under the lighting I've got here and several other places, I've noticed it has a, a slightly bluish, greenish tinge to it, and that could be offset by an adjustment in the ABW printing mode. But I mentioned that in the other video. That's about making better looking prints. This is just about how you can, I would say cheat, but an easier way of checking for linearity. Now, if the paper needs a lot of adjustment, as the uh, Velvet Fine Art VFA setting did for this particular paper, it may be beyond what you can really pick up on this. In which case, take that as a hint that since this one's so much better, for this particular paper, choose the Epson matte. But I've got in the scanner here, I've got an alternative version of this print here. And I'm not sure that any differences will actually show in the, uh, on the video here. Uh, but I can see it quite clearly here is that the shadow, this is the VFA version I just pulled out of here. This, the shadows are much darker. Um, they're crunched up. Now, this looks fine. Many people might print and think, well, it just looks a little dark. Actually, it could do with adjusting. It should look much more like that one. So there we are. Let's try and see if we can just see. Um, if you can see a difference, then well, good. Um, I don't rely on video for being able to show any form of subtle differences at all. How would I actually do this? Now, uh, um, for myself, I would use something like ViewScan software. Now I've got a, an, an article which goes into more detail about this process. I wrote that article with a different scanner uh, just before I started doing videos a few years ago. So you'll have to have a read of the article. It has more steps as well in this. Now I'm using Photoshop here uh, quite deliberately because I've used Photoshop for years. I could just about do this in Photoshop Elements. Uh, Affinity Photo, no trouble, could do it in that. What we're doing here is we are scanning this step target here. We don't 
the rest of the image doesn't matter for this. We're scanning that and getting an image in and then looking at that image. Now, yes, there are inaccuracies in the scanner. I am not using scanner profiling, for example. Now, I've done scanner profiling. If you're interested in scanner profiling, I covered that in the original written review uh, where I included some information on scanning artwork using correction profiles from a calibration profiling for the scanner. Um, but that's covered there. That's color scanning, so not really connected with this at all. So I'm just using the basic Apple image capture application. I'm not even using the Epson software. You could use the Epson software for it. All I really want to do, I've set it up. This is on the network. This software has just found the scanner here. And I have set an area to scan. Now I've selected using the marquee, I've selected just scanning the target. As I say, it doesn't matter. The, the rest of it is irrelevant. I also, in this instance, I'd set the scan, this is when I was testing this earlier, I'd set the scan resolution at 75 dpi. Now 75 dpi, that's worse than fax resolution. It doesn't matter because all you need is a reasonable color uh, or you know, tone ver uh, value from each of these patches here. Now, I have got some other versions of this which you could use as well, but this particular one, and if you have a look at the article, you'll find lots of links of different ways of approaching this. This is the simplest version with a scanner. So I'm just going to capture that little bit there um, and scan it from the example there, and I get a scan from it. Now I've saved it as a JPEG. Now I could save it as a TIFF, but we're not really concerned with accuracy and detail here. This is just a consumer scanner. We are not talking something that's been precisely set up and calibrated or anything like that. As long as you're not aiming for some spurious notion of perfection, um, then you know something like this is fine. All we are doing is trying to make a basic correction for this printing. Now, I'm going to say up front, that if you get the shadows blocked up as much as they are on this, then as I said, or, or on this one here, uh, use a different setting. If the settings are, re yeah, if the results from it are bad and you've got another setting which gives better results, use the better one. Uh, you may find that even the better one of two, and remember I did this, the, these profiles, I created them for all sorts of different papers. The only commonality between the papers was the fact that they were called uh, photo matte paper of some sort, and that can cover anything. So we've got this, I've scanned it, and I've got here on the screen here, can, I've got Photoshop opened up, and I've there is the image. Now, if you look at that image, uh, you can see the tonality of it. But I want to have a look at the histogram of it and the gaps in between and these bars and things on the image. These are made so this could be scanned with a spectrophotometer. As I say, there are different versions of this which may be easier to use. But anyway, I've got that. All I'm going to do with it is I'll open it up and I'll just go through the basic steps. Now, this is absolutely not a Photoshop tutorial. I'm running the latest Photoshop on this MacBook Pro. Um, I was testing this earlier on an older version of Photoshop. And in fact, the original article was done on CS6. You could do this basic process here, what I'm doing here, even if you have a very old version of Photoshop. So if you can get an old version of Photoshop to run, you can do this. And that's why it is most definitely not a step-by-step -step tutorial. One, I never, well, almost never do step-by-step -step tutorials. To make them detailed enough, they cease to be relevant to most people who might use them. Uh, and also, uh, I, I just don't, I'm trying to get the principles over here. If you need a step-by-step -step recipe to do this, you'll have to read the article and interpret what that says. Uh, I'm just going to go through the basic steps here. So if I go over to here and I've, I've gone through this and I'm just going through the history on it, I've opened it. Now, one of the first things I do is have a look and I've set a new layer here and I'm using layers rather than adjustments because it makes rather the direct adjustments because it makes it easier to show what's going on. I've looked at the levels. It turns out that the 
levels are all over the place, uh, the black point, the white point, because of the scanning. Um, I've not done any precision in the scanning. If I'd used software like ViewScan or something like that, I could have got a much more accurate scan to start with. But I'm trying to keep this simple, so I'm just using the Epson software here and driving it at its simplest. Now I've got that, what I need to do for that is I modify that to change the black point, the white point. Now. The black point is obviously the black, happens to be this double bar at the end here. It's also bar here is full black as well. But I did that and white, well, that's just the paper white. You assume that that is 100% white. So I've now adjusted the levels there. Don't do anything other than set the white point, the black point, just to make it. Already you can see from looking at the histogram, it has a whole series of little spikes on it. Each one of those is one of these patches here. Now the next step I'll go through is I've added a bit of a blur to it. Now why blur the scan? It's only 75 dpi to start with. Well it's because there may be slight variations in it and how in the scan and I, I want the values from effectively from the center of each patch. Now once I've blurred that um, it softens up the look of the histogram, but I want to make it sharper, just easier to use. So if I go through these and just now what I'm going to do is just crop bits out of that image. I don't need this solid bl black bar at the end here, nor do I need each of the gaps in between them. So I can chop those out and in the step of going through the process, I end up with smaller but solid patches of each colour. Now, if I just go through each one, um, that's all the steps on that. I just used select, cut, and I now have an image which has just like a whole series of patches. Uh, they are these patches here. Now, how accurately does that represent this? Probably fairly accurately because it's a reasonably good scanner. But, you know, not good enough. And this is why you can't really use scanners for making ICC profiles. Um, there are lots of other reasons as well. But you just don't know how good the scanner is, really. Uh, you're relying on the scanner being the readings that come up being accurate. And you've got no way of knowing that. They're broadly correct, which is you know, why you can get away with doing this. But anyway, I've now got a whole set of patches. And if I go down on that, and if I look now at the histogram, I can see a whole load of little spikes. Now, if the printer and paper combination and settings were perfectly linear, those spikes would be equidistant from white to black, because that's what they're meant to be on this. Paper white, full black. So therefore you've got steps. There's 21 steps in this. So it's 5%. So 0, 5, 10, 15% black in it. You do not need to go to the 51 step version of this or, or more than that. You just don't need it. So I've got that. How can I make use of this? Well, I'm going to look at making an adjustment curve. Now, the nice thing about doing this in Photoshop is that when you've made the curve, you can save the curve and you can pull it up. So you can have a, you know, a, a, a paper adjustment curve that when you've made all your adjustments and your picture looks good on your screen, you can apply this curve to it. It will do the opposite of this. So it will open up the shadows. So it's the idea of it corrects what's wrong here and so I can make that curve. And this is the bit where if you want the details of this, do have a look at the article because it's much easier to show that in that, in that. And the other thing is one of the reasons why I still vastly prefer writing the articles is that I do these videos with no script, often in one take. Um, I rely on knowing what I'm saying. Um, with the articles I can go through, I can adjust, fine tune, expand, contract bits and pieces like that. So. I know I say this often, but if there is a written version of the information for a video, always check that because that takes precedence over what gets into a video. Because once this is published, I can't change it. So what's in this is in this. I can change it a bit when I edit it, but beyond then, no, you're stuck with it. So we have got a little chart here that shows the patches. 
That's all we need to know. And in looking at that, all I could try and do is just try introducing some adjustments in the curve. Now, this VFA1 needs such a hefty adjustment because it really does crunch your shadows up a bit. As you can see in this, and this is based on a 51 step uh, patch, red, uh, red in, as I showed in the previous video, using an I1 ISIS scanning spectrophotometer to read these in. So these values I'm fairly certain are accurate. These tell me about the color tint, but they also tell me about the distinct nonlinearity. Um, it's good and linear until you get to about 90% black and beyond 90% black it gets a bit blacker each percent you go right but really it doesn't get very much bright blacker and that produces in the pictures the difference in this one and if you're curious about the test image in general for black and white I've got a series of articles go to the article about it this is available for free download all the different versions of it but go to this and the, these pictures allow you to very quickly decide whether a black and white print mode is good enough uh, they give an overall tone uh, there is shadow detail in some of these if you can't see the shadow detail in this and on this particular picture here this is a picture uh, one I took years ago in Colorado there is detail in the shadows of the rocks and everything uh, that is the quick test for me to know something's wrong. In fact, the real giveaway is this bullseye pattern at the top here. If that looks okay, the print's probably gonna be okay. Just from that one little test target there, that's the one that really tells me what's happening. But, so I've gone from two prints. This one I know from my previous testing is fine. I've thought, well, can I correct the VFA one? I've gone through the process here of scanning, reducing the data back down to just patches here that match these patches here. And then this is the bit, the iterative bit, where you have to make a, a curve, then test it. Remember though, that the stronger the adjustments you make in the curve, the more chances there are that you will introduce uh, banding and other undesirable effects in the print. Just because something looks okay on a screen like this, very difficult to visually adjust tonality like that. Once you do it and you print it out, you'll find, oh, I've got in smooth tone areas, I've got steps. Now this one, lovely and smooth. This is the Epson matte one, of course. There's no steps there at all. There is that slight overall color cast that I'd like to get rid of. But if I look for the print that's in here, I can instantly see in looking at it, this, the bullseye, is too black. Doesn't look, there's no banding, which is good. But the shadows, they're too solid. Um, all sorts of things. May not show up on all your images, but it's worthwhile if you're doing black and white to use a known test image like this. And this image was developed over several years. And the original of this has been downloaded many tens of thousands of times by people to test stuff. In fact, um, Somebody I know from a paper company was talking to some paper manufacturers in China. And whilst they were showing him a demo, they actually showed on a table a whole series of my test images uh, on a table in a, a, a paper maker in China. So, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Where's my free samples of paper? Anyway, there you go. Hope that's been of use. If you've got any questions, let me know. I've got an awful lot of stuff I cover in black and white. Um, printing. Um, what I've covered here is available for most other printers I've looked at, certainly all the better ones, uh, and, and yes it's possible in even more detail. Um, so there are various ways you can approach this, lots of ways, but when it comes down to it, print something off, learn how to recognize one of these, what works, what doesn't work. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Please do all the usual like and subscribe. I always forget that. But um, anyway, bye.